All right, being that we have form, I'm going to go ahead and start um, in the agenda, which is pasted in the hack in the chat. We have the HackMD. If anyone logged in after I pasted it, let me know if you need access to it. Um, we have the previous minutes going. I did add the x86 SIG to this call and invited Florian with little to no notice, um, just because when I was putting together the agenda, I noticed we had mentioned in it that we were going to discuss it this month. Um, so just an opportunity for anyone to ask Florian any questions. Um, we do not yet have a formal um, request for the SIG yet. Um, but if we have any questions to Florian, we can go ahead and ask him at this time. The conversations so far have been handled in email. Amy, when you say we don't have a formal request for the SIG, meaning the board has nothing that we're requesting of the SIG or? We don't have the issue open yet. And it, it kind of goes back to we have how to create a SIG in two different places and they're conflicting. Um, that's one of those items we have from the board meeting in person last year to clean up. But except for the email to the development list, we don't actually have any a formal issue requesting it. Okay, let's, I think for the sake of today, we should pretend that we do. Okay. Um, because if, if we can't even be internally consistent on how SIGs are supposed to propose themselves, I don't want to hold somebody accountable to something that doesn't actually make sense. No, and that's fine. And um, when I reached out to Florian, I don't know his timeline. So I wasn't right. sure if he was prepared for any questions or anything today, or if he wanted to wait till next month. Um, I'm trying to find the email right now to bring up myself. So hang on a second. Yeah, while you look, I mean, I, I guess it's a it's a fair question to ask Florian himself. Like, uh, I believe you want to to actually create the SIG and go forward and and uh, actually do the work that we've uh, described in the develop list. But if that's an incorrect assumption on my part, please let me know. No, that is uh, correct. I pretty much um, have support for spending cycles on this r immediately as this thing kicks off. Okay. So it's not something for the future, actually. Okay. okay. Are there so any concerns anyone has? I'm trying, I'm getting the link right now. Um, yeah, I, I remember the last... Uh, I think it was last month's board meeting where we talked about two things specifically. One of them being um, there is similar work that is happening in the hyperscaler SIG uh, on a limited basis and how to collaborate with the hyperscaler SIG was one of the open questions. Um, I don't know that Florian's in a position to answer that today, um, but it is something that we should, we should sit down and figure out because I know Davide was interested in that question. Uh, and I, he's on sabbatical right now, right? Yes, he'll be yeah. back in May. Yes, he's, um, he, he'll be back in a bit. Okay. Um, and then the second question, I believe, was along the lines of how are we going to have uh, enable or, or allow contributions um, to the SIG? So, Florian, I don't, I don't know if you've had any time to think about that one, because I do remember passing that question along. Yeah, it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem because I don't really know what kind of resources are available for six because uh, frankly, the documentation is a bit impenetrable. Um, at least if you're not familiar with the, the center's organization as such. Um, I was uh, expecting contributions um, in, in the few cases where we need to change the official packages in order to keep building stuff. I would have hoped for support for in the form of merge requests um, against the official branches. And then of course there's the, the matter of benchmarking and testing. But um, I expect that uh, providing the, the reference builds with the modified build flags, that's more of a centralized initiative. 
Um, and I, I don't know if, if that's going to happen in, in, in the Koji, production Koji instance, or um, in the SIG space. Because in the past I have done similar things on, on the production um, instant, Koji instances uh, using a separate disk text so that things can be rebuilt without changing disk kit. And that would work in this case because I have access to the production instance of as a red header. But that's just the perspective that I have. Uh, that's the tool I'm familiar with. So that sort of taints my view. If you have different expectations, I'm open to that. And of course, uh, the production Koji instance is access to that is more limited. I actually don't know personally. Uh, yeah, that, that's something I would have to look into. I don't, Brian. I don't know if you have anything uh, more on the infrastructure side that would provide insight into what Florian's talking about. Yeah, I think the suggestion that I would have is um, like, especially for um, uh, like, if we don't have anything that we're definitely going to land in CentOS stream and then ultimately RHEL. That needs to be built in the community build system using uh, separate repositories that we can provide for you either in GitLab or, you know, someplace like that. Um, I think it's completely valid for SIGs to go and propose merge requests against the stuff that is destined for CentOS stream and RHEL, but any of those pre-release things or anything that you want to accept contribution of uh, as part of the SIG probably needs to go through CVS and the, the SIG repos. All right, from a creation deployment aspect, Florian, are you okay with what Josh and Brian have um, said? I noticed going through the emails, there was also talk about putting a hashtag on that would work to create what you need. Um, I don't know the technical aspects of it, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, if the desire is to use CBS instead of production Koji, then um, I need to look at what's available there. I suppose it's some form of Koji, not a completely new thing. And I, yeah, I expect we can make that work. Okay. Um, Neil, did you have something? I think it was you. Yeah. So just very quickly stating, CBS is a Koji instance. It has an set of builder stuffs. Uh, it can do things, but not all the things currently that Stream Koji can do. Some of these limitations we've hit against as part of doing stuff in the hyperscale SIG. And um, to date, most of them have been unresolved. So uh, it n some of the nature of you rebuilding the world might run up against some of those things. The other part is um, the infrastructure between CBS and uh, Stream Koji is completely separate, including the builders. So the hardware capabilities are not the same, though I don't know whether they reach the same level that you would care about. Yeah, we've, we've discussed this a little bit with Florian. Uh, the, the builders in CBS are sufficient to what, uh, what he's looking for in there. Um, and like, I'll be, I'll be honest, we're, um, we're not in the business of doing uh, bespoke Kojis for every single project here. We're, like doing most of the things through CBS is sort of a, a strategic thing for us as as part of the SIGs at the moment, and so like the uh, you know we're not going to be able to really provide you a a, a separate Koji instance just because uh, this may have you know impact on certain packages or whatever. I think that's where we you know deal with 
I, I, uh, like I'll say the the folks that are interested in the SIG are well versed in how packaging works and are able to uh, to sort of deal with any of the upgrade path issues that might come our way by messing with you know disk tags and and things like that. So I I trust they'll have the uh, the technical capabilities of of dealing with any of that stuff. Okay, so it sounds like we've got to work a workaround for how that would work. Um, and I and I, I get it, Brian, we don't want to have like offshoots for everybody. We'll never be able to support something like that either, um, even if we wanted to. So another issue I'm noticing going through these the, the thread from the mailing list is a name for the SIG. Um, in different places, we've got the alternative Alternative. Damn it. Hang on one second. I want to make sure we have the right names. Alternative architecture. Sig yeah, alternative is... architecture sig taking over that. Um, then we also had an x86-64 was suggested. And... I would like it to not be called the x86 sig because it because we previously had a thing that right. its purpose was doing x86, i686 builds. And it's still not out of the question or out of the message of ludicrosity or whatever phrase you want to use for this, that someone might want to do that, even though Red Hat doesn't want it at this particular point in time or basically ever. Um, so I don't, the concept of reusing a SIG name to mean something else is not something I'm particularly enthusiastic about as a community person. Again, my opinion doesn't matter because I'm not a board member, but like that's something that uh, I don't think is a good idea. Well, I think, and it was pointed out, and I think it was by you, Josh, in here that if someone says X86, you know, people have preconceived ideas of what you're talking about, and it actually isn't what Florian's trying to do. Um, Modernized yeah, we can... x86-64 was suggested as well. Um, and test architecture optimizations. Are there any of these, Florian, that you feel meets your need? So x86-64 is fine, but then we have to decide whether it has a hyphen or an underscore in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, why I avoided that. I, okay. I can, <laughs> yeah. Usually um, it's spelled with a hyphen, but the RPM architecture has an underscore for technical reasons. What are your feelings about the architecture one, alternative architecture? Only because something like that would allow if somebody wants to do something else similar to join in with you in the same SIG um, versus keeping to sp spinning up different SIGs for different architectures. Are you okay with that? I mean, that, that I think the needs would be quite different for something like RISC-V, which in, uh, involves an architectural bootstrap because the architecture currently exists yet. Yeah, and I mean, sorry, Florian. Please finish. And um, I think the uh, previous uh, alternative architecture SIG was more about non x86 architecture, so the exact opposite of what I'm interested in today. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, given the scope of the work that Florian is trying to do, I don't think alternative architectures fits. So, okay. But, I, mean, I, I would certainly be opposed to that. Okay. Oh, Sean was the one who. Uh, it was just one. it was just what popped into my head, and I haven't pushed for it since. So I'm not. Don't consider me to be the sponsor of that idea. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering if we want to pick a name that is more of a tent for different people, not necessarily doing the same things. Like in Cloud Sig, we have OKD, which is Kubernetes based, and we have OpenStack, which is OpenStack. So we have two totally different things underneath the name of CloudSig. Um, 
And I'm just wondering if we want to set ourselves up for something similar when we choose the name for this. Optimized arc sig. Neil is suggesting optimized arc or architecture sig. I mean, it's a more appropriate suggestion. I do think it expands scope more than Florian's interested in. Okay. But it opens the opportunity for other people who give it, who care about this kind of thing to do it for the other architectures. The point is, it's, Florian's is, a, is, is only one effort that will eventually happen. Like, we're fooling ourselves if we think that that's never going to happen for any of the other architectures, ARM, Power, Z, whatever, right? Like, we've seen baselines raise or tunables being tweaked or whatever happen over the course of three different RHEL releases across the different architectures. It's not silly to consider that maybe we would do the same again in the future, and you'd want to you want to have a ground for that that you can just direct people to look at doing, whether it's internal within Red Hat or external from the community. It, it's a totally fair point, Neil. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I think it's putting the cart before the horse. And we also don't have resources for these other architectures uh, that no, might, we don't. other people might be interested in. It's kind of like the decision to put the Chinese SIG underneath promo as an umbrella for other potential language SIGs we might have in the future. So having them jo join a less specific name, but the same purpose um, is kind of where I'm thinking. I mean, it's fine if people want to do something more specific. There are only two hard problems in CS. The, the thing that I don't want to do is create a broad name within with a broad implied scope and have a whole bunch of people show up and ask about like, how do I do this for risk V when Florian has no intention of doing any of that work, nor do we have any capability to do it. And so I'm okay. Like I'm not blocking the name of like, you know, optimized arch sig or something that has a broader scope. But at the moment, at this moment in time, the only thing that we're talking about is doing optimized builds of x86-64. And so being clear on what we're actually working on seems to have value to me. On okay. the flip side, this is also intended to be a community project that other stakeholders can come in and bring resources and interest and things like that. So just because you're not going to do anything more than that shouldn't preclude other people wanting to do other things. The whole reason Hyperscale came, got Intel coming in doing this stuff is because we were okay with them doing it under this banner. They're doing the work themselves. They're figuring the crap out themselves. But like the, the whole point is to provide an appropriate banner for people to come under. And yes, you're not ready to do anything else. Maybe you don't want to, maybe you don't have to or whatever. But like having the appropriate banner and the appropriate directionality for it means that the op the door is open for other people in other organizations to contribute. But they they can't, Neil, for the exact same reasons that you've been complaining about with CBS limitations for hyperscaler. We do not have the ability to take the kind of contributions and resources that people want to do. And until we can solve those problems, having broad umbrellas just worsens the problem. Okay, so it, it sounds like we should start narrow, but with the open-mindedness of changing the name and making it more broad and inclusive, should we get the resources or people who have the hardware or whatever and willing to do the work? That would so, be my okay with that. Okay, so we still go to... Who was, who was chiming in? Sorry, I was going to chime in. I wonder if they're, like, like I said, the naming things is one of the two hard problems of computer science. Um, but I wonder if there is a name that is both, that could be both non specific, but not uh, aspirationally generic sounding either. Um, so one that doesn't necessarily limit us to x86 but doesn't say hey we're taking every archer at anything anything you can imagine um, yeah, I, I mean but, I, it's a it's a very good suggestion i'm more than happy to brainstorm with whoever is interested in coming up with a name here um i believe in the last board meeting i said i'd also be willing to sponsor the sig itself so i can work with florian and neil and whoever else um to come up with a name that is 
not setting false expectations, but also providing uh, uh, an umbrella of some sorts. That's fine. Okay. So does it, okay, name withstanding. Is there anyone in objection to the SIG being formed? Okay, so let's go ahead and officially declare that this SIG is going to exist with a name yet to be determined, hopefully within the next month. So we can get them set up in infrastructure and anywhere else they need to be set up. And I will make sure to, to get the tickets and everything else opened and formalized. Uh, and I'll work with Florian on that too. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All righty. Um, hang on. Dog wants in. Come on, let's go, let's go. She's very demanding. She knocks on doors. Okay. Um, I added a new section to, under issues for issues to be discussed because we really didn't have anything for that type of issue. Um, we had issues to be closed, new issues and issues on hold. So sometimes there are gonna be issues that exist that aren't necessarily on hold. Um, so the one oh, sorry. I- Sorry, uh, is the X86 sick business Yep, concluded? you are good to go pending a name. Okay, then I can sign off because it's really yes. late for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, for Thank you so much, Florian, for staying up for us. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. So 93 is the end of life, end of build announcements, which I believe we are pretty much done with. Um, Pat is not here this evening because he wasn't feeling well. But I think we're prepped for that to go out. If am I wrong on that? The blog post is already up. Okay. Um, and I have a merge request then to put notices on the website. Um, the it was it's I uh, there's a technical limitation on getting it on the front page that has to do with how the the theme gym works. But I have it's all up there, and I will get uh, those merged in this week, probably tomorrow. You, I mean, I know actually, Amy, you saw the yeah. merge request and commented on it. So, you know, and Eric Hendricks internally looked at it and said it looked good. So, and I'm going to put a note that this can be closed as soon as your issue and everything is merged on the website. And I'll, I'll probably, um, that on the social media schedule, but uh, probably for next week. I don't think it's like urgent that it has to have a tweet at the, exactly now. No, and a lot of people yeah. are on PTO this week, so yeah. I know I'm holding the RDO release until next week. Yeah, and in fact, that might be just a thing that, like, maybe on a monthly or so cadence, there might be just a reminder, you know, reminder tweets to social media um, about that. All right. The second issue was the signed certificates issue, which is not assigned to anybody. Um, Pat had put a note in there that it should go to infrastructure, but it wasn't clear who should be talking to infrastructure. I think the the requester on the ticket should be the one okay. to open a, a, an issue with infra on this. Okay, let me see if I can get it assigned to him. Okay, perfect. Um, does anyone else have any issues that they'd like to discuss that isn't on the agenda? All right, Sean, it's up to your update. Okay. Um, well, the first thing is what we just discussed, which was the, um, the end of life announcements. So I can skip that. 
uh, newsletter sh should come out probably tomorrow. Um, I did a, a like a new process. I'm trying to kind of revamp it, um, and I'm working on adding different content. But um, anyway, I did a new process for SIG to put their update in that involved kind of putting a more um, bullet point form in to a merge request in GitLab. Uh, so I'd appreciate feedback from the SIGs that did do that uh, this month, if they liked it, hated it, whatever. Um, but I'll, I'll continue doing it for the next couple months so that, you know, all the SIGs get a chance to tell me they like it or hate it. Um, and then I'm really just uh, I'm doing stuff prepping for uh, Red Hat Summit and in general looking over events for the year. Um, I, I should say, I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's no like secret that like everybody's travel budgets are, um, kind of reduced for this year. And that goes for me as well. Um, and so, you know, if there are events that you think like we need to have a presence at or something, then, um, like, let me know that, you know, so, cause I'm looking at where, where we can, uh, reduce, you know, in terms of staffing booths or, sending people or whatever else, but, you know, I'd still like to get in a, um, a connect at DevConf US in Boston uh, in the fall. So um, looking at kind of where, where, where it makes sense to pare down and, and where we can still uh, get people to. But uh, anyway, Red Hat Summit is next month and I'll be there. We have the whole community central area. Um, and like the, the schedule's pretty tight, um, but like if anybody is going, um, like, I'd love to like catch up, have dinner or something. So like, let me know and we can probably schedule it. One thing we can probably look at as well is any of the local Linux fests. If like, I know Carl's involved with Texas Linux fest. I keep saying I'm going to get involved. We, yeah. could, uh, we could easily drive up there for a day. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah. So as I was going through my budget for the year, I budgeted some, money to for myself to go to that and that was one of the ones that I, I i cut um but like with the idea that like i don't need to go there like you or carl can go there you know and you know just a night in a hotel maybe or something it's a lot cheaper than flying me in so yeah and if there's like a sponsorship or something you need to do to get to a table a couple hundred dollars is a whole lot cheaper than you know sending people from a distance right. so um Okay. And that also goes back to what we were working with the promo SIG, um, trying to have some budget and swag ideas so that people can say, hey, I'm going to this local event. I need the sticker pack or whatever. Um, so I can always that. do sticker drops. Those They're pretty cheap. Yeah. So I mean, shirts and other swags, those start to get pr pricey, but stickers are cheap and easy. Yeah. Um, Neil, uh, Linux Fest Northwest, I, I, I don't know. Um, and if we have people up in that area, then again, like if I can get somebody there for like the price of a hotel room, you know, I can, I can squeeze that in. If it's flying people in, maybe not. But it, that one was also kind of on my radar, so. Yeah, we were talking about that as a West Coast Connect idea. Uh, yeah, for maybe next year. I think this year we're just going to have the two Connects. Yeah, um, but I think that's so, why it was on your radar. Yeah, it's like the I have on my radar is Texas Linux Fest, Northwest Linux Fest, and Ohio Linux Fest. Um, and all of those, like I'm looking at, you know, if if I can cut. I'll I'll go to Ohio because it's a short drive for me you know but um yeah and i, I think know. texas is in austin which is a short drive for right. carl and i um like, i'm not gonna fly carl to ohio like i did last year so also um at open infra they're gonna have a an open source community thing before or after the mixer during the mixer um and i let them know that i could rep for CentOS, so i'll get a sticker drop from you for that cool. um I know everyone's going to be there from open stack. I mean, I can put both hats on, but I figured I'd give someone else an opportunity to be the open stack person if they wanted to be. Um, so that'll give us a little rep there. Um, 
And if there's any other events that, you know, anyone hears about that is having something like that or just an open source community type thing, they're going to be there anyways. Those are great places for us to get tick, um, stickers out and also just kind of talk about the project. Um, so, yeah. Um, we have no SIG reports or any other business. Does anyone have anything that is not on the agenda that you'd like to discuss? I had a, a question for Sean on the previous topic. Um, did we talk about Brno, uh, DevConf in Brno in June? Um, yeah, it was something that we had been uh, considering. Um, but I, um, my recollection, well, okay, so one of the problems with it is that if we're looking at doing three per year, um, it would be nice to have a a U.S. West and a U.S. East, um, as opposed to having uh, two European ones. A, a, a Europe, U.S. West, U.S. East, as opposed to two Europes. Um, so that was one of the problems with it. But it's it's something we had considered. But um, I mean, we could get space, but I don't know if we can get enough people there to even make it matter. Um, yeah, my, um, the reason I ask is because like. My travel to Brno is in a quantum state at the moment. And mm -hmm. depending on the day, I may or may not be going. My intention yeah. is to try to go. Um, if there are others there that would be willing to do, you know, even if it's not a full connect, like booth duty or something like that for a table, um, I'd be willing to help out there. Uh, and then when when is Ohio Linux Fest? I don't know. Whenever that... So... Uh, Ohio <laughs> I looked at the website, but it's for 22, and it was in December. I know, I know. They're always super late in announcing. Uh, they've traditionally been in October. Uh, however, when they came back from COVID, they did December, uh, and they did the last two years. They've done December, but when I talked to them last year, they mentioned that maybe they'd be trying to go back to October. So October, December, maybe somewhere in the middle, but at, okay. uh, Q4. That one's drivable for me as well. So I can, mm -hmm. depending on what else is going on, I might be able to make that. Okay. Yeah, it looks like Texas Linux Fest is kind of like that where they don't really know when they're going to be. They mentioned spring dates, but spring's almost over. Yeah. Uh, what? Is, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm amazed at how much disarray that these these events are in when it comes to the planning stages or even just declaring something as simple as dates. Given how hard it is to, like, I've tried to organize events and, like, get venues and stuff, you'd think you'd know the date, at least, if you're going to have a venue. Because, like, that's the hardest thing to lock in. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if they're struggling extra this year because finding sponsors uh, for funding is probably really, really hard yeah. in this industry. So. Yeah, if you go to Texas Linux Fix, it well, their cert is down. <laughs> That's not good. Um, yeah. Linux Fest Northwest is in a special state where JB is taking on, uh, Jupiter Broadcasting is taking on the cost of actually bringing the whole event up uh, in an attempt to revive it properly. So uh, they're hoping that this, if like people attend and, and, and show up and boots and things and all that stuff, if it works out this year that they can essentially effectively revive the whole thing the following year in a normal, more normal fashion. It's a, it's not a great year to attempt to re revive a concept. I think they were, I think the Lings Fest Northwest people were just planning on giving up entirely and they were convinced not to. So um, I don't have the full story about it, but that was the impression I got when talking to them about it. So it, it's kind of a Hail Mary. Yeah, and I mean, oh, sorry. go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, if you think about it, this is the best year to kind of pull a lot of these community events together. So if you remember 2006, 2007, one of our hacker maker spaces got really big. It's because we were in a recession and a bunch of tech people lost their jobs, didn't have anything to do. Mm. So this would be a great year to recruit talent to open source projects. That's assuming anybody wants to do any recruiting at all which is a whole <laughs> other separate problem. Yeah. Well, Celeste did say to open source projects, not to companies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
And, and I think people got, you know, we traveled last year and it still probably wasn't to the extent of pre-COVID, but people started going out again last year. So a lot of these smaller festivals, you know, decided that they would start doing things. And then, you know, the world's kind of crashing and budgets are getting cut again. So, you know, I think the local ones have a chance. Um, yeah, if they can be organized yeah. and happen, and the, but they'll stay local. Yeah, if they can pull on, you know, local people, then, you know, as Celeste says, people are looking for stuff to do and whatever, maybe they, you know, pull that in. But if they're trying to pull national or international people, it's, it's, a, it's a hard time to do that. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm worried a little bit about our our sister project in Fedora with Flock being in Cork this year. Mm -hmm. I think it'll it could get canceled. I don't know. Um, really, don't want Flock canceled uh, again. Again. I know. <laughs> I've been I've been waiting six years for a Flock. I don't want it <laughs> to know. go down again. I'm they still trying to figure out how I can get there, but. You know, I'm saving money. <laughs> so that's that's my approach here at this point, because <laughs> I, I don't expect anything anymore. So I'm just I'm just saving money for it. <laughs> that was but, yeah. one that I, I I refused to mark cancel on my on my budget cuts. So I'm going darn it. I w I was hoping to swap something that I wasn't going to to get there, but. We're getting hit again, so um, we'll see. But yeah, I mean, I think they're still optimistic it'll happen. But I wouldn't be surprised if something happened and they went virtual. I think it'll de be dependent on, you know, getting a feel of what's going on and sales and what budgets are, and then they'll make a decision closer to it. Um, I know like open infra right now, the registration is a little low, but it isn't far off from how the registrations came in from Berlin last year. So they're still hopeful that they're going to have a thousand people. So, um, but the conference also has become more open, more Kubernetes friendly. Um, like I mentioned, you know, I'll go to the, the community event representing CentOS. Okay, and OpenStack because I won't be able to help myself. But, you know, <laughs> having this event out there and saying, you know, if anyone's going from other communities and want to represent them, you know, that's a big opening, you know. So I think that those are good moves for conferences to do to be a little more open to other projects coming in, you know, and taking an advantage of, you know, being able to get your numbers. So... But we shall see what happens. Yep. Are are any of you going to Open Source Summit in Vancouver? I'm almost certainly cut out of that one, but I'm just curious. Jeff, yeah, it's local yeah. for you, right? It's yeah. almost local, but yeah, I'll be there. Hopefully. Okay. I was I mean, assuming it doesn't get completely cut. Oh, right. Okay. Well, if you're local, you might be able to go. Open source. Oh, for for Neil, Open Source Summit is the Linux Foundation's big tent event in North America. Oh well, now I know why I've never gone to it. Uh, <laughs> Linux Foundation events are absurdly expensive. Yes, <laughs> it's um, very corporate. Yeah, mucho sado. <laughs> I've never paid for one. Yeah, I've never paid for one either. Actually, I take that back. I ended up, I ended, I bought a ticket, doubly reduced price for Dublin. And then technically they owe me a ticket because I ended up speaking twice. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, all right. If anyone's going to Open Source Summit and is willing to do sticker drops and stuff and do some booth duty, let us know. Um, I can do sticker drops, and I will probably, if I do go, I'll be in the uh, in the booth for okay, the uh, in the uh, the Red Hat booths. Okay. Um, 
Sean's going to Red Hat Summit. That'll be this open source summit. I'll do open infra. Anyone going to KubeCon? Okay. Nope. I, okay, so I think those are all the big conferences I can think of through at least the middle of summer. And flock. Well, that's towards the end of summer, but yeah, flock. Yeah, okay. And, that's true. And, that is, and God yeah. knows when the Texas Linux Fest is. Right. I wouldn't call that a big one either. Um, another one to think about are DevOps days. If there's a DevOps days in your area, submitting talks. Yeah, those are, I mean, you know, along the lines of Linux Fests, um, if we have people that that can get there locally, you know, Again, and actually, can, very well I run. Do some stickers or something for those. So, okay. Do we have any more topics for today? Anyone want to bring anything else up? All right, let's give everyone back fifteen minutes of their day. Um, any suggestions? for holding the meetings, please let me know. We took out going through all the issues previously, which has definitely sped us up, but sometimes I feel like we're, we're so sped up, we're not, just, we might be missing things, so. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, with the talks of the, um, the working sessions for the board, were we going to cut the board office hours that happen a week after board meetings? Um, so we couldn't come up with a good office uh, working meeting. So we are trying asynchronous on the one issue that we were working on, um, which isn't really going well. Um, so please comment on that. Um, do you, do you still want me to schedule? To point, what? Do you want me to schedule a board office hours for next week? I will miss next week. Uh, myself, is anyone going to attend next week? Historically, I haven't be gone because it conflicted with work schedule things. I actually don't know what time it is set for now when, when you do those. So I don't know if it conflicts anymore with my new schedule as of yeah. a few months ago. So ap after time zone change, it is now, I have it as 9 central. So 10 Eastern on, yes. on Wednesday or Thursday? On Thursday. Thursday. A week on from the Thursday, let me, yes, let me check the the evil thing that dominates my life. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, our work factors. Uh, actually, that should be okay. Uh, oh, okay. Next week, in for clarity, that is a.m. Eastern, right? A.m. Yes. Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry, should be clear. This is not happening in the dead of night. I'm not coming to a meeting to get the dead of night. <laughs> I don't uh, know. You're in true. one, but that's yeah. a different issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I I probably could go to it. I think I've I've done it before uh a few times when I've and my new schedule doesn't have anything set for that at all. Um, well, let's ask that this time question. Are any board good. members can any board members attend next week? I could attend only for the first half hour. Okay. Because it doesn't make sense to have a board office hours if none of the board can attend. Right. Yeah, obviously not that. <laughs> Usually, I, I, I have a standing have conflict with it for whatever it's worth at that time. However, it's a conflict I can drop out of if I'm needed. But I'm rarely the board member that anyone wants to talk to. So I don't want to be the person who represents the board for the entirety of the office hours just to go... Red Hat has no opinion on that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, come on, Max. I, we, normally, we value your opinion. That's why you're here, and yes, that's why we, we wanted you here. Yeah, usually I'm able to attend, but next week I do have a conflict. All right, so if Mike can attend, go ahead and schedule it. Okay. And I know you, you said you were only going to be there for half an hour. Maybe we... Was your conflict the first half hour or the second half hour, Mike? It's the second. So I have a, I have a conflict. Okay. Or, sorry. Yeah, 10.30. All right. So go ahead and schedule it. 
chances are if no one shows mic you'll be free after five minutes unless you want to just talk like with sean which is what i normally do and possibly neil and possibly neil yes okay. uh having it only be 30 minutes means i can split it with the um the uh, Fedora social hour that also overlaps on that time. So yeah. usually when they two conflict, I, I swap in and out between the two of them. So that works. Yeah, that's why I like overlapping IRC meetings. I can be everywhere at once. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we couldn't get a good time that a majority of the board can meet for a working session. So we're going to give it a, a chance on asynchronous. Um, and see how that goes, that then we'll readdress whether async works for us or whether we really need everyone, even if it's is for there, half an hour. Is there a chance to do some later after the workday or on the weekends? I am not in an office environment that allows me to just freely go out and touch the internet. Um, I don't have a problem with weekends, but others might. It, it depends on what weekend and if I'm doing something with the dogs and horses, to be honest with you, uh, my weekend availability. Um, I know later, like, this is super late for Brian and for Thomas. Or early. I mean, I'd be happy to get up at six or seven and work for an hour or two. But I know for the West Coast people, that just makes it impossible. Yeah. And also, like, a lot of the, because of, you know, the mixed time zones, I will say my mornings are usually in meetings with other groups. Um, what time zone are you, Celeste? Your East Coast? East Coast. Okay. I'm just, I'm currently working out some conflict of interest things with my work. And so that's why I can't step out yeah, in the middle of the issue. Um, all right, let's see how the asynchronous goes, and then we can check out a morning, possibly. Um, just because we're already asking Thomas and Bex to stay up late. Mind you, it's once a month. Um, it's, and, but our thought was to do this more frequently than once a month. So in that case, I would rather not keep them up late. Um, on a regular basis. And we could maybe do something where one week we're early and one week we're late type of thing. And people who can attend one, there's no expectation of attending everything, but attending what you can might be an option as well. Um, the only issue with those is it's sometimes hard to keep track of which is the early meeting and which is the later meeting. Um, Fedora actually does a pretty good job of that, though, having a one meeting at noon and one meeting at seven o'clock in the morning and just having making sure that there are the invites to keep track of people, um, which we did not do well when we did it with the OpenStack user committee. We, did, we're, we weren't very good about having a set um, invitation that was all on the website, but not sending out invitations because we were being all open source. Um, so maybe that's an option as well. But let's see how we do with the async. Um, we'll give issue three or eight or whichever it is, another couple, like say another two weeks to get comments. And, you know, with the idea that at the next in board meeting that we can have discussions and finalize things. That's my goal. Anyone else have anything? We are at eight minutes to go. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending and all your input. It is always appreciated. And we can stop the recording.